Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome to my channel. Thanks for coming back, and tonight we are going to talk about setting up a Synology to Synology backup. I'm going to configure that. So in the last Synology video, you saw me set up NAS2, which is the device for this customer that's going to be off-site. We've got about 110 gigabytes of files to back up, and, and I'll show you the structure. Uh, so the first sync will actually be done on site. So I took the NAS to the customer site uh, just about two hours ago, and it's hooked up. We're going to run that initial sync. The customer will move it to the off-site facility uh, tomorrow, and then we will reestablish that link, and everything should back up in the evening as specified. So let's get over here and take a look at that so here we are we're logged into NAS1 and then here's NAS2 so on NAS1 uh, the packages that we have installed we've got hyper backup and Hi hyper backup vault installed and if we come over here to the file station you'll see we've got this share called backup and under backup is the shares folder and then you can see that this was modified 8 4 2017 at 947 so this backup runs daily it's a it is a a um, a backup from that Windows 2012 box that Tim is telling me that he's gonna upload the footage so I can get that to you but that's a it's a daily backup and what we're doing is we're actually going to create I think we're gonna I don't know how many restore points we're going to get and we're actually going to check that out when we set this up. So this is our source, this is our destination. We will actually crisscross the backups because the owner is going to back up another machine at the remote site to that and then it'll shoot over here to the office but there's not nearly as much data. And one thing about the Synology, if you haven't used it, is that they do have this thing in um, excuse me, in the network setup called traffic control. When this comes up here, I'll show you. So traffic control, you're supposed to be able to enable this, do a port or a protocol or a service, and say what is the maximum amount of data that this can push. This thing does not work for hyper backup. So I've got one other one where we're replicating a terabyte. Well, we were trying to replicate a terabyte of files, but we actually brought down two connections because this thing just goes full throttle. So there will be a video on how to use an edge router to set up that quality of service for those queues because it works like a champ on the edge router. I just wish that the traffic control on here worked a little bit better. If I could complain about anything on a Synology, it's this. This is the first thing that I've worked on that hasn't worked as expected. So we'll see. All right, so here's our here's our backup, and over on NAS2, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we're going to create a a folder, a sh uh, shared folder. There is no shared folder available. Click OK. Uh, so we'll go to create create a shared folder, and we're just going to call this rep replication call it data replication you can also encrypt uh, the folder so but I believe that as the files are backed up from the Windows server they're encrypted so I'm not gonna encrypt encrypted files we'll see um, right now you can see that there are three users on here so we'll give admin and whow read write access to that. We uh, don't have these joined to Active Directory, so we'll leave the advanced permissions alone. And we'll just click OK. And so now here we have our replication uh, shared folder on the volume. So now we're going to hop back over here to NAS1. And we are going to go to Hyper Backup.
hyper backup is going to load and it's going to ask us where do we want to back up to now you've got a lot of choices out of the box with the Synology you can do local shared uh, folder and external storage remote Synology NAS C2 beta remote rsync server so if you've got a Linux box or you've even got you know there is a version of rsync for Windows called Delta copy which is a fantastic program uh, you can do WebDAV, S3 Storage, Azure, OpenStack, uh, IBM SoftLayer, Rackspace, Amazon Drive, Dropbox, Google Drive, Hubacy, Hubacy, High Drive, SFR, NAS Backup. Not sure what that is. I feel like I should know what that is. High Cloud, S3, and then Local Data Copy. I have to assume that this is if I've got uh, a USB drive hooked to this and then just a remote data copy. We are going to choose remote Synology NAS. Now we are going to enter the IP. Now I will have to change this after the sync is done because this is going to be sitting at another site. Transfer encryption. I will, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on because I'm going to want that, that to, to be on. I know what you're saying. You didn't encrypt the folder, but you're encrypting the transfer. Yes, I'm going to encrypt the transfer. Let's see if we can guess the username and password. So if I got the username and password right, and I hit the shared folder, I should see it should go out, communicate with the other server, and then there's our shared folder that we created, the replication. So I'm going to select that, and we're just going to let it populate. We're not going to put... Uh, our own custom folder in there, you can see that it created this NAS1 underscore 1. Then what will happen is after we move this, we'll relink it to an existing task. So we're going to go next. And it's going to ask us, what do we want to back up from this Synology? So we could expand this, but I'm going to do the whole backup share because anything that we want to back up, I've told Tim, to dump it in this backup at this level. So we'll click Next. Task Synology NAS 1. We're going to call this NAS Replication. Enable Task Notification. So I've got to go in there and put email addresses in for notifications, things like that, which is another video that's coming because if you don't know about Mailgun, Mailgun is awesome because you can do SMTP relay for free and if you have a Google domain I'm going to show you how to configure Mailgun to allow you to do relay so you can put it in your controller you can put it in your Synology anything you need to relay email from you can do it with this enable backup schedule we're gonna run daily first run time I think we'll probably do it at like it'll probably start it at night they close it you know, people are probably out of there 7, so I think if we start at 8 o'clock, we should be okay. We will enable backup rotation, so check this out. We can keep 256 versions at the current data. They've got Smart Recycle. So Smart Recycle is an intelligent backup maintainer. It will retain, where'd they go, hourly versions from the past 24 hours which we only back up once a day, so that's not going to do us any good. Daily versions from the past one day to one month keeps the earliest version created each day. We only create one each day. And then you can do the weekly versions older than one month. I don't know that we need 256 versions. I think 90 versions should be okay. So I think that's sufficient. We're going to go ahead and hit apply. Now I actually need this job to run tonight because there's a, a few more things and we're, we're wrapping this job up. You know, we are going to be hopefully involved in the ongoing maintenance and administration, but we've set everything up so that if the customer chooses to just take the reins, it's not a problem. Back up now. Yes. So now what you're going to see is it's going to come up. It's going to tell us the last time it was backed up. It's going to tell us when the next schedule was. Here's our target. So it shows us that the target's online, which means it can talk to the other, other Synology server. 
tells us the IP address, the username, the shared folder, the directory, how much data has been stored, so the used used size, and then there's an integrity check, but is not which has not been performed yet. Over here, the shared folder we see backup application none schedule time 8 p.m. Uh, daily and it is checking the source file size I'm gonna go ahead and pause this for a second while it does all of its calculations and once it has some information here I will be right back so it has started moving data it's processed about 207 megabytes and I don't have any statistics or anything like this yet. I can tell you that it is over 100 gigabytes that we're backing up. So you can see over here on the LAN, we're pushing 2 megabytes up. Now, this guy is performing all kinds of tasks on this data. And so we've got the CPU pretty much pegged. It probably doesn't help that we're in the user interface because that draws resources as well. Uh, we're at 61% RAM, 97% CPU. This will settle down. Over on NAS2, CPU's up a little bit, RAM's up a little bit, and you can see that we are receiving, we're downloading at 2.2 megabytes per second. What I really like about this, and I, I can't show you right now because we don't have a backup that's finished, but the backup statistics are so are so wonderful on this it has a graph and it shows you how many files were changed per backup I mean it's it's wonderful I will do a follow-up on this once this has done the original replication and then one more so if you're looking for easy data backup you, this Synology you could get a bigger unit it's got a little bit more memory a little bit of a bigger processor and it would run a little bit quicker than this, but the only thing we are doing with these boxes is moving this data. You know, we're putting it on NAS1 and then we're replicating it to NAS2. Nobody's going to be logging into these. It's going to send an email when it's done. Other than that, this is purely for replication. You can do this. You can do it really inexpensively. So they, they usually say that data is not backed up unless it's in three places. So we've got it in three places on the live server, on the first NAS and then the second NAS which is off-site. I feel pretty good about this especially with 60 backups in the rotation 60 versions so if for some reason the client were to get a ransomware we should be able to fail back to one of the other backups and not have an issue. So that's it for this video. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please use those Amazon affiliate links and all the affiliate links down there to keep a few bucks rolling in the channel. Keep some of these devices coming in like the uh, Bluetooth padlocks that I'm going to be doing videos on. We are getting back to the Ubiquiti videos. If you've got any ideas besides the Let's Encrypt, if you want to see something else, let me know. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video.